hello, Ben here with Student on the Lake. Hey, so um, here's a quick video in the middle of uh, saber tooth uh, burrs, and this is an order that I, I replaced. About every six months, I replace a lot of the burrs. Uh, I throw some away, keep keep some of them, but here's uh, a little quick review of the saber tooth burrs and uh, kind of a good little short tutorial on how I use them in a, in a one over the world on burrs. So, uh, first of all, uh, for years, I used Cutsall and Jordy Johnson over at uh, Carving Fusion. You should check him out and uh, just carve her up. He uses uh, Cutsall burrs. So here's the standard Cutsall burr uh, that I use. It's not an extreme, uh, but it's a flame. And I had a little bit of trouble with vibration on these, but uh, I, that's in the story for another time. So uh, I run burrs in eighth inch collets on one hand piece and three thirty second collets on the other one and the reason is I'm I just don't like to change so you can see that's a three thirty second and just for reference that's a saber and that's a cuts all um, I run three thirty second collet in my Oz Elite uh, my Oz plus two plus and you can see that that says fifty thousand uh, you have to push a little button to go from forty to fifty thousand uh, there's the hand piece it's a quick change, and it's a quick change, call it. Uh, even with that, I still like to run the, the two different hand pieces I have for years. So you know, I don't have to change the collets in it. The second one I run, Power Carver, Micro Carver, is an, or a RAM iCube. The difference between the two is uh, about 400 bucks. So 300 for one, 700 plus for the other. And there's the RAM, and you can see I've got the eighth inch collets in those. And then just makes it the eighth inch tend to be the, the heavier duty burrs. So here's how cuts all comes. And here's two cuts all burrs that I, I haven't used. And these are the uh, gold flame. They're a little bit uh, or gold ball. And then there's a flame behind that. The speed on these is 10 to 25,000. And like I said, I've had a, a little bit of problem with vibration. I run nothing less basically than 40,000. So I'm way over the manufacturer recommended speed for this. Uh, now, if you're in a Dremel 4000 or the new 46 or whatever the heck it is, uh, check out Ryan Cook. He's got a review on that. Um, if you run that type of handpiece, you're not as susceptible to vibration. Uh, but I've just found that the, the cuts all burrs are a little too, uh, they vibrate too much in my hand. So I went to Sabretooth because they uh, they're not vibrating as bad. Uh, they actually seem to last a little longer. I get about a year's worth of work out of them. These are these are a year, year and a half old. So here's an order, two hundred dollars worth of burrs. Uh, each of these burrs is about uh, twenty bucks a piece. So, and this is a misnomer with tax. It was like two oh seven or something along those lines. But uh, uh, stick around on this video, and I'll show you how I use all of these, and you'll see how many you get in there for uh, two hundred bucks. So, so there's a three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's there's two in this. Uh, and this was a, a combo pack. There's two or three in there. Uh, they just like all the rest of them. They come with neat little uh, adger, adger, or uh, advertising. So agitating. So this is saying, uh, hey, you should uh, send us a project. We'll put it on, on your deal. Here's a nice little uh, saber tooth deal, and then a, a sticker that says, uh, of course, I carve with saber tooth. And I'll throw those back in, throw them in a drawer somewhere, and then uh, five years from now they'll be all antique and and uh, still I want to have them put them up on something. So here we go, and here's here's the part I was talking about on the speed. So I'm looking at all of these. And, and quite frankly, I just noticed this about a year, year and a half ago, uh, not paying attention, but the max speed that they say you should run the Sabre, the recommended is 24,000. I've already told you that those uh, two hand pieces run about 40, and the, and the Oz Elite uh, will go up to 50,000, and I run them wide open. Uh, I very rarely throttle those down, and that's an extreme Sabre right there. I haven't used that yet. Uh, so the next uh, set of burrs that I'll use, and you'll see, I'll give you a quick demonstration at the end of this, is ruby burrs. Now ruby burrs, you know, they're kind of neat. Uh, they're uh, real smooth. They do a sanding finish. And you can see that each of these has a little black line on them, which helps identify 
uh, those a little bit better. So the last burr that I will use is a diamond burr on occasion, and they are cheap. They come in a set. You, for 10 or 20 bucks, you can get a set of 10. Uh, they tend to burn up. They're finer, uh, and they come from, from China. So here's a little plate I made. I'll show you that later on. Uh, and I'm starting to put the burrs in there and give you an idea. So the two cuts alls, brand new, are on the left there. And then here's the setup that came out of the out of the package. You can see uh, going in there that I've got that extreme flame. I've got a ball, uh, a taper, and a flame, another ball. The yellow and the green denote different uh, grits. The yellow is medium. The are fine and the green is coarse and you can see there you go so with those two cuts alls on the end that's two hundred and fifty dollars worth of burrs right there and I got one more to put in there and that's a new that's just a new holder plate that I'll show you at the end I stuck underneath my uh, carving table off to the right side of where I normally sit but that's uh, what 200 bucks worth of burrs look like so how would you go ahead and use these or how would I use these? Here's a piece of basswood. Here's a quick, and I'm going to do this uh, normal, normal speed, and I'm going to do it with uh, new, new burrs. Now, one thing about new burrs is, uh, in this case, and I'll show you as we go along here, they they are they're sharp, they're nice and clean. They don't, you can clean them off with a, a brass wire brush. In fact, they recommend that. I'm putting this in the uh, three thirty second. Call it in the uh, Oz hand piece and uh, you see that kind of wobbly going on there instead of just a straight me cutting a straight cut in there I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around this little star see that right there that's a sharp burn it grabbed uh, so you have to be a little bit more careful with the newer burrs once you get this worn in just a little bit it won't be quite as aggressive uh, and this is the one of the few times that I'm gonna film uh, this little piece here all in real time so you can kind of see and you can see how fast that cuts and especially in that basswood so I'm going to I'm going to ground this down so this is going to be a low what they call a low relief uh, carving and I'm just kind of kind of staying away from those lines and, and as I said you see it jumped again on me there those new burrs uh, really want to grab so once I get that done That was a bonus for all of you that know what that is, and for those of you that don't, you don't need to know, uh, since some people are offended by that, but uh, such is life. So I got a rough green ball in this one, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. Now I'm going to take the ground down on this, and I'm just going to uh, take the background down. You can see that's leaving tooth marks in the piece. And I'll show you how I go about that. And this is really kind of my progression in carving. So one over the world, quick, quick down and dirty. You can do this with a Dremel. You can do it with a Dremel on a flex shaft. Uh, Jordy Johnson and a lot of the chainsaw carvers use uh, the Dremel 4000 and that new one 46 or whatever the heck the name of it is. That, uh, and like I said, go over and look at Ryan Cook's videos on that. And uh, he, he does a review of the of that. And it makes sense to have a flex shaft if you're standing up, walking around, and uh, trying to finish up a chainsaw carving. Those, those are a little bit better. I'm not real fond of them because I have a tendency to break the shafts and then it annoys me at the end. Plus, it takes a lot more room. These little power carvers I can set on the side, and I tend to do a lot lighter work than they do uh, when they get into the chainsaw stuff. So you can see I'm just going around, and I'm, I'm kind of working in a circular pattern around, pattern around this whole thing. And uh, I'm just going to take the background down. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty rough. So, but this is just kind of a concave going in here. And, you can, and this is, like I said, all real time. So what was this? Maybe uh, two minutes to get to this point. So there you have it, and uh, typically I, I will do the same same thing on this, and 
here's the pencil mark so you can see kind of the flow that I set up on this. So the flow was set up for this thing to go around as opposed to straight across or straight to the left. It gives you a little bit of uh, definition in the carving. Now you can see that I went and burned with the micro burner, PGL Enterprises micro burner. Uh, and now I'm putting in one of those ruby bits. Um, ruby bits, they're, they're a little bit more expensive, $20, $25 a piece. I get about uh, six months to a year's worth of use out of them. This is the ball. You know I like the ball because I can go in any direction. But I'm just going to follow what I did earlier and go clear around this. And this leaves almost a sanded finish. You can, uh, with a little bit more care than I'm taking here because I'm doing this real time and fast for you guys. Uh, you get almost a sanded finish. So I switched to another ruby burr, which is a taper. And I'm going to do each of these uh, bevels on the side of this star. And once again, this is real time. I, I, so I've gone to the saber burrs because they seem to run a little bit better in the high high speed uh, stuff. And one thing I like about these little hand pieces is that there is little to no vibration in them. And uh, as you notice, it took me about a year and a half ago, I figured out that uh, um, I was running these at 40,000. And I, I happened to notice on the package that recommended speed uh, and the Dremels, and I forget already, was 10 to 20,000. Or the cuts alls was 10 to 20,000, and the Sabre was 24. Um, we did some work a while back. I, I was talking with the guy who owns the uh, cuts all. He sent me a bunch of burrs. He sent me some burrs that uh, that's a little uh, ruby, uh, small taper, or they call it a cone, versus there's a taper versus a cone. And I'm just kind of doing some finish work here. But uh, he sent me a bunch of burrs when I, I complained about the vibration in uh, brand new. Uh, cuts all bits and we're trying to figure it out a couple of them he sent me didn't have coating on them uh, a couple of them he sent me did not have the uh, uh, didn't have the, the burr actually cut into it they were just smooth and uh, I kind of found uh, even in that that there was a little bit of difference in the quality of them that I was having trouble with the shafts a couple shafts were too wide it's supposed to be an eighth inch shaft or a three thirty second shaft in the shaft one would fit fine in the collet another one would not go in the collet without a little bit of light sanding or grinding on it so uh, i don't know if during the pandemic they had a little bit of trouble with their quality or what the case was i, I still like cuts all burrs i still use them but i'm going to give them a break uh, here for a while and and use the saber burrs now the saber burrs are a little harder to find you, you've actually got to go to Saber Sabertooth site. You can't get the grab these off of Amazon. So, not uh, you can see that uh, leg of that star right there, or I cut a little bit too deep. That's a proponent of having uh, not a not taking enough time. Just doing the demo here uh, for you guys to kind of see the process on how I use these burrs. Uh, again, I, I cut saws are are in my brain compatible to the sabers. Uh, they don't have quite as uh, big a range as the saber tooth burrs do. And uh, I thought, in the back of my mind, I thought the saber tooth burrs were a little bit more expensive than the cuts all. But when I, I looked back through on the pricing on these, they, they seem to be the same thing. They used to be about 15 bucks, and now I don't know, as a result of the our great economy and all that good stuff going on now, they seem to have gone up. So you can expect $20 a burr. And, of course, the title of this was $200 worth of saber tooth uh, burrs. Now, like I said, I will uh, replace burrs about every six months. Uh, most of you that are subscribed to the channel know that I did a bunch of custom work. Uh, I did that all with about that same amount of burrs. And uh, that seems a lot if you're a hobbyist and you're, you're goofing around. But if you think about it, that's, that's for probably a year uh, worth of burrs. And uh, in my case, I got a full six months and all the commission work out of that set of burrs. And, and most of them are still good. There's only a couple that uh, really would, would quit using. Now, these burrs are kind of unique. As they start to wear down, they get different properties. Uh, the, the ruby burrs get a little bit smoother and they start burnishing. So that's going to be about the end of the demonstration there. You can see uh, I talk about it. Jordy talks about it. Uh, just Carve Rob uh, talks about it. You got, 
and, and the rest of the guys down below check them out in the links uh, the carvers that I follow always sign your work uh, you guys know that I, I do like the shellac that's an amber shellac that's a quick one over the world uh, I'm not going to do much more uh, with this I would let this dry steel wool it maybe put another coat or two on there and then I'll put a uh, Johnson paste wax so I needed a little more space for burrs I didn't want to clean out and throw some away so I'll show you in a minute where this goes you can see that screw sticking up on the right hand side and there's one on the left hand side I'm going to screw that underneath the the burr holder that I've already got you can see I just make a sandwich with that and I like the sandwich because uh, that holds the burrs up a little bit higher so I can actually see them if I just cut a hole in there the burr would sit down in there and I wouldn't be able to to see it or grab it out of there and you can see I did I don't know what 30 30 new spaces for those so two cuts alls on the left there that haven't been used uh, they're the fine the gold ones uh, they seem to run fine I'm not having any trouble with those uh, the, most of the trouble I had was with the uh, cuts all regular um, that you saw at the beginning there so there is what $200 well, worth of burrs looks like and there's where I set it up I kind of gave you a one off the world that's my table over on the right side of my chair where I set my butt and both of my hand pieces are on the left there so hey if you click like uh, by all means leave a comment hit the bell and subscribe hey thanks a lot this has been Ben with uh, Stu on the Lake hope you got something out of this